Hey everybody, it's Linda G. And today I have author, Ease Your Mind. I had a reading with him. I saw him, I think I saw you on Mel's show. I think Mel even said, oh yeah, Linda, he's good. So um, I booked a reading and it was good, you guys. I will tell you, he's a good psychic. And um, so we started talking politics and I was like, just come on the show with me and let's continue. Because <laughs> it's, it's the stuff I say too, but it's coming from him. He's boom, boom. So first tell us about how you, just a little bit of an intro on who you are and um well by the way did you send me email me all your links or how do we get a hold of you too by the way yes i did okay good. yes i did yes i did and um i started out as you know as a little kid you're psychic you know things and you tell things and i was telling a mel show where the nuns used to sprinkle holy water on me because i'd say things and you know but luckily i wasn't sizzling so everything's fine right so, uh, but then it was, I became, I was, I, I was a reporter for a magazine and Gene Dixon happened to be with the magazine. And this is way back when, and I got a call from the bureau chief in, the, in Washington, D.C. saying, Gene wants to meet you. So I went down, I was in New York at the time. So I went down there and met with Gene and we spent two days together and it was just, incredible you guys and, got along really good yeah she's you know she said you're a psychic and you know things but you don't know how to tell people and and you know so she sat me down for like i was supposed to be there for a story and she called me in my hotel i had breakfast with her and then i we really couldn't talk because somebody else was there and so then she called me back and said come to my townhouse now you're not going to get the story for two for two days anyway so just come, come here so so i went and, and we spent two days together and it wow. was like it's like composer Stephen Sondheim says when he was like 15 16 he met with Oscar Hammerstein uh -huh. and taught him everything there was about to write a Broadway show everything his whole in that one afternoon and I felt privileged the same way with Jean Dixon is she just cut to the chase and right. it was really fun that's I, wonderful. That's wonderful. And then she, you know, it was, we kept in, you know, she kept in check with me through the years. And, you know, she gave you more confidence. Oh, yeah. Because she believed in you. I There was a psychic that I met from Shirley McLean. She, and her name was, her name was um, Shirley McLean. No, her name was, I can't remember. I think her last name was McLean. No, they weren't related. She was from Virginia. And years ago, when I was in my 30s, she said, uh, my daughter was young. I wanted a two boy. I didn't want any more children. And she said, I see two boys. There might be twins. They're so close together. And I'm thinking, ah, whatever, this bitch doesn't know what she's talking about. And uh, she said, I see two more husbands. I'm like, what? And, and then she said, Linda, when you're in your pushing in your 60s, I see you standing before people and people seeking you out. I see you standing on a stage talking. It's almost like you're an orator or you're a teacher or something. People are coming to you. And years later, before she died, she even said, you're actually going to be famous. Mark my words on that. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, that's nice. But then I also thought maybe it was Hollywood. <laughs> Maybe she's talking. I always, as a young girl, always wanted to get the Academy Award. But now I realize what she's saying because I'm doing the work they're supposed to be doing. Now it's not about accolades or people adoring you, but I just listened when they said, you're going to do a YouTube channel. Yeah. And I yeah. just did it not knowing what I'm talking about. And the fact that it's taken off is wonderful. I think if it wasn't for you, a lot of people wouldn't be here. So thank you so much for thank you. You and allowing new people to surface. Yeah. Well, I want to, I, somebody it's said, new. I said on my show years ago, come on, I know there's more of you out there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just became like, it got big. I know. I didn't know if I should wear a tinfoil hat today or not. So I didn't, but uh, the thing is also Jean had told me that I would be doing this later in life. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah so she said you're not ready yet you'll be doing readings for friends and all that but then when the time is right you will know and what happened was i was um i just told you yesterday i was writing for a tv show i did all the music for the show and then the show was on hiatus the 9 11 hit my father died all this stuff all the, everything and, yeah and, and if we had uh, Andre look at your chart, he'd be able to pinpoint exactly what was going on. Yeah. And um, it was just, I had to pay my rent. I had to pay my car. I had to pay. And so my friends said, do readings, take money. So, and I remember once I asked Jean about that, taking money for using your gifts from God. And as she said, you know, Leonard Bernstein, right? My friend. I said, yeah. Well, he makes a lot of money using his gift from God. So what's the difference? Yeah. Like I told my friend Dan, I said, you know, you're an artist. He does beautiful paintings. I said, what if I say to you, you got to give that to me for free because it's a gift from God. <laughs> you know, people need to have, in the old days, it would be exchanging where. Well, but, but there has to be an exchange. Of, I mean, I've been giving readings for people for when they just needed, they had the money. And I just said, just give me a dollar because there has to be some sort of. There has to be some. Thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, or something like barter but there has to be that exchange right because people well, want to you know I, also you and i aren't out to make all kinds of money either well no they gave me a uh, lot of numbers last night so <laughs> for real probably yeah but my maybe for like 1999 i don't know <laughs> <laughs> they don't have time zones right <laughs> I got my lotto tickets. I'm ready to go. Well, I know Tom Tom Tully said, or Tom T. Moore said, if it's part of your soul contract. If you win the lotto. Yeah, I'm like sitting there going, I don't remember so about my soul contract. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. I listen, I just enjoy the fantasy. What if you won? What would you do? I love that whole thing. My father used to call it, it's called go to hell money. He said, <laughs> You win, you tell everyone to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I just think about, you know, how I would share it and open up uh, some sort of uh, giving. You got to, you know. Oh, I mean, I have uh, all my nieces and nephews would have their trust funds, blah, 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 blah. You know, all that stuff. Yeah. So, but listen, we were talking about Lauren Bulbert. Yes. She's saying some really stupid things like, uh, President Biden couldn't do this NATO speech because I'm going to tell you right now, there is record of it. He's on the beach with no shirt on. I'm thinking, what? He just did his NATO speech. It was beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, so you said. You need a tape in your brain. Ah, I think so. But uh, you said, because, you know. She's on, this guy that's running against her i forget his name at the moment he has raised so much money and people are just so sick and tired of her and and that whole thing with the kid calling 911 her son yeah and then, and then all of a sudden it's like shut up and, and all that and there's abuse it's like there's something here this is a made for tv movie eventually oh my god but what did you see about um i saw her losing She's not coming back. Right. And I thought she was going to lose the last time. Honest God. But sometimes as a psychic, may I say this? Sometimes I've given somebody a prophecy. And then it doesn't happen. And then they get mad at me. And then at it happens moment. the next year. Yes. I've done readings where I've given people information and it doesn't happen. But then, and they yell at me and scream at me and don't talk to me. And then a year later, they call and say, it happened on the exact same dates, but this year. But it was, yeah, sometimes it takes it. Because I saw her going. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you said she's in there to win? Because she's a congressperson. I don't, no, no, no. I don't know how long she's in there for. I think she has to come back up on 20, in 24. And her little cloven hooves. But, um, <laughs> sorry. Um. I think she really wanted to be Trump's running mate and she would do anything to do that. And, you know, but I would not want to drink that Kool-Aid. All I can say is that they're all nuts. Yeah. You don't necessarily see her getting out. You know, not Georgia eventually. people stick with her. Eventually. Yeah, but I, I feel they're getting tired of her too. Okay. But like, 
the infrastructure bill, a lot of things happened in her district thanks to that, which she voted against. And so the people think, oh, well, you know, she's doing this. She didn't yeah. do it. You know, but she's taking credit. And the other thing I want to bring up, everybody, who's going to win 2024 as president? I want to say Biden. Yeah, you said that the last time. That's why I just want everybody to know you Biden. said Biden. Yeah. And um, the whole thing with Trump, it's Trumpy Dumpty or the Orange Menace. <laughs> it's just that, I mean, first of all, with this whole thing going on with the court cases in Florida, it's just this delay, delay, delay. We're going to know more on the 18th, you know, what Judge Cannon decides to do because they had that thing delayed. Um, it was supposed to be on the 14th Friday and then they got delayed to the 18th. And now Trump's saying he does. He thinks with everything going on, he shouldn't have any trials until after the election. That's not going to happen. No, but is she going to think that we could no. do this? Okay. No, I think I. I don't feel she. Maybe in her heart of dark hearts, she would like to, but I don't think she knows entertainment purpose only. But that she basically can't because there's too many eyes on her. There's too much stuff on her, and that. Even though Trump's requesting it, it ain't gonna happen. No. And what I do feel is that I wrote something down here. Okay. Right. The August it was supposed to be August and December. I feel she's not the DOJ said we'll we can do it in December. I feel she may delay that till February. Okay. January, February, but that's okay. it. I don't see her. I don't see this being, you know, infinitum. He becomes president and, you know, pardons himself. Right. And, you know, He'll never become president again. He's got to be alive to be a president. So, um, uh, Anne wants you to know, could you give us an update on the writers and screen actors guilt strike? It's re really beginning to impact California economy. I have a couple of clients involved with that and um i think this is set day 72 of the strike i feel it's going to be over in october like it was in 2000 when they had the writer strike okay. because what the fighting is about is with all the streaming with everything going on the producers are making lots of money they're not paying any royalties no like pennies on the dollar exactly and also they're threatening with ai that we can write scripts, we can do this, we can do that. And um, so it's a standstill. But I do feel that as we get to October, the end of September and October, it's, it's they finally come to an agreement. That's still a long time. Gonna, especially I know. Trying to feed their kids. I know, there's, there's gonna be compromises, but, right. it's, uh, but I do feel because of this, the writers become stronger against the producers. Right, right. No longer. Um, Barbara wants to know, as our states continue to face more and more natural disasters, will more insurances drop home homeowners insurance? California dropped all fire insurance for homeowners. I still have earthquake insurance. Me too. But remember with, well, for me, it was a Loma Prieta. You, oh, yeah, couldn't, get, you couldn't even get renters earthquake insurance. Yeah. Um. I don't see the, what I kept on getting was, yes, yeah, some will be canceled, but other ones are going to take advantage of it and hike up prices. Okay. Hike up the premiums. Carol wants to know, will Gavin Newsom be president of the United States one day? What do you think? I don't know. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say no to it, but I'm not saying yes, but I really feel like it's going to happen in six to eight years. Yeah. He's got that presidential look to him. Yeah. But he, I mean, he's also California has such a surplus, it's not even funny. He knows what he's doing, he sure does. And, um, so are the Republicans reading that our numbers went down with the economy? The stock market's going through the well, road actually, road. actually, stock market went, uh, inflation went down, inflation went down. That's it. But the thing is, all the companies owned by Republicans are not taking prices down. <laughs> Of course not. I mean, the inflation is going paying to... their, are paying their people a decent wage. Right. 
I mean, gas here out, outside my window, the sign says five twenty nine a gallon. Yeah. It's been that way since March. I know it's so expensive. And listen, my folks, my family, the native um, and my mother has land that they have leased to draw oil on. And for a while there, we, we were making pretty fat money. And then all of a sudden, they just stopped. So the United States isn't taking advantage of the oil we have. They're getting it from elsewhere. Well, there were refineries here in Los Angeles that they kind of closed. Okay. So, okay. yeah. But it is it is what it is. I do feel... The, the, things are definitely turning around. It's just that if you have a town crier being foxy and saying all these things about how horrible, how horrible, how horrible it is, and you get that drilled into your head, you don't, and you don't go anywhere else. Everything is, you know, walking with the sword of Danicles over your head. Yeah, because even now with all this good news, you should see that Mc McCarthy and everybody. Just downplaying, acting like we're going to heck in a handbasket. Yeah. Um, what about Carrie Lake? She said, you put a hand on my president. I think she's vying for vice president, too. You put a hand on my president. I'm. We will come out with our guns. And this is a, what did I say, a station message or a public service announcement. Well, you've been hearing the scuttlebutt that... Melania doesn't like her. Oh, really? Yeah, there's... there's well, friction. she idolizes Trump too much. It must be irritating to Melania. But the thing is, when I've looked at her, I don't believe she really believes what she's saying. Carrie, yeah. It's like an actress saying what she thinks she has to say because she was a news anchor. She had credibility. Yeah. And, and so she had a following. And now it's like, who is this woman? I mean... She's cray cray. I mean, but she's got she's talking to people who are vulnerable well, enough to listen to her. Well, it's I, I swear it's like sometimes they didn't have to believe it, but they're looking for that lone wolf. They're like trying to light the light the flames. And like, oh, we didn't say that. They took it out yeah. of context. Trump looks for that, by the way. He's really hoping they he kept saying, get to get meet me here. And and then it wasn't the big thing like he had with January 6th, and he's been very disappointed. But well, I, but I wrote people, that, people getting arrested for January 6th and going to jail. That's why. I know. But you know, the other thing is I wrote, she said that on Twitter, I said, Oh, so basically it's war. And I said, so what are you saying? Democrats don't own weapons and we don't have tanks and jets. And this is not going to be any civil war like it was in the 1800s. No. No. So I'm not quite sure what they think they can accomplish. But if you said it, it's it, bluffing, it, hoping that it, the person it, will. It's dog whistles. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's you know, just put it out there and, and, and just muddy the waters and get everyone confused. Yeah. So Tommy Tuberville. Oh, God. Get, tell me your hits on him. First of all, for some reason, he's now one of the strongest senators. He's very powerful. And he's an idiot. I'm sorry. Entertainment persons only. He's stupid and he's a racist. Yeah. And unfortunately, his term is up in 2027. Now, the whole thing he did with with the uh, Marine Corps yeah. and, and the Commandant, I really feel there is going to be some blowback. And I really feel that McConnell may uncharacteristically step in. Yeah. Because you, you're dealing with our armed forces. You're dealing with, you know, with national... You've got to protect America. Who are these people? They used to be pro-America. They're not anymore. Well, you remember years ago when John McCain was at a rally? And, and that lady was, said terrible things about Obama? About Obama being a Muslim and all that. And... and and he just said, no, no, no. He's a nice guy. There's no decorum anymore. There's none. None. And they're feeding on that. So listen, uh, Atlantis said, uh, Ron DeSatan requested donations for the hurricane fund. 
Now he do, he requested the donation go to his wife. His wife. Now, what I've been saying for the last three months. <laughs> Me too. Is first of all, she like wants to be Nancy Reagan on steroids. She's a Karen. <laughs> She's the ultimate Karen on crack. Right. And she thinks nobody will see what she's done and there are, there's a lot of stuff that's going to come to the surface oh yeah well listen it's like look has, at what they're doing not what we're doing there's a whole bunch of money in the pot and there's nothing making her show us what she's done or spent 35 million was it i don't i don't remember but they in posted her, it in a hurricane relief fund that nobody is getting because no, she's holding on to it well, it's and it like, happened when he said, "Send it to my wife. Don't send it to Red Cross or whatever." I said, "You guys, he's—they're going to take the money and use it for themselves." I mean, like that's, Trump. Well, it's like taking the playbook from Trump, and grifters are us, you know. Joni says, um, "I read that Trump had told Eileen Cannon that if she played her cards right, she might get a seat on SCOTUS, but I can no longer find the article." Eileen Cannon will no not ever be SCOTUS. No. And because Trump's not going to win either. No. I mean, that's what he's hoping he wins. And so then he pardons himself and blah, blah, blah. But as far as Eileen Cannon is, there's too many eyes on her. She may do a few little things that are questionable. But even if they go to the reddest district in the planet, when they start showing what they have, it's like... Jack Smith doesn't even know doesn't only know where the bodies are kept. He has the receipts for the shovels. Okay. And knows who bought them. Okay. Which goes to our next question. Um, Vincent wants to know who's going to be indicted in Congress. Mine, I'm not sure. I have a wish list, but I'm not sure of actually who. I saw um I don't see Kevin McCarthy, but I do see Marjorie Taylor Greene. I, was I do see Matt Gates, Jim Jordan. Um, I know there's several of them. I was going to say Josh Hawley somehow. Yeah. And also, there's something about Ted Cruz that is just too creepy. Oh. oh you know that guy that used to be in charge who was a speaker for a long time, the one that cried all the time. Uh, Ryan? Not Ryan, the one before him. Oh, John Boehner? He said Ted Cruz was probably the most evil person he ever met. He's mm. straight up evil, he said. Like Jared? Oh, my God. He's scary, too. Whenever I look at Jared, it's like you look in his eyes, and it's like looking in the eyes of a shark. Like, yeah. no, it's emptiness. It's darkness. It's nothing, nothing evil. Okay, so what is Rupert Murdoch's in game with Fox? What is his what's driving his bus? Certainly it just isn't greed. Does he just get off the manipulation of million millions of people? It's the ego. It's the ego. Like, you know, look at the peons down there, they're ants, you know, we don't mix with them. Right. He you got know? a little power behind that too. Yeah, but he's up there in age. I mean, he's not hes not going to be here another 10 years. No, no. Unless he's like with Walt Disney in the cryo chamber somewhere. <laughs> so um, Melissa wants to know, are Putin and Progoshin plotting an escape? I want to say I get a kind of yes on that, but not together. Okay. okay. Now... I was looking, I did see somebody was asking about Ukraine and NATO and Putin. What I kept on getting was Putin is, he's knows that his days are numbered. But I feel him desperate. Well, he's desperate. And, but I, what I feel is that Ukraine will be part of NATO within 18 months. Oh, good. 18 months to two years. But I'm going to say 18 months. And if it's not 18 months, it's 18 months when things start moving forward for them. Because that's, that's, they cannot go into NATO until the war's over. Yeah. So that's So is I, Putin just going to keep it going because he doesn't want them to join NATO? Yeah, but Putin may not keep on going. Yeah. I, I was looking at, is he going to step down? Or are they going to step him down? Are they going to, like, 
take him to the field. <laughs> you know. I saw a white flag. It's not on on um, Ukraine side. It's on the other side. I saw a white flag. So there might be maybe even Putin goes down and they come to some sort of agreement. Well, that's what I'm getting here is it's a lot of it's going to boil down to also economics because of the sanctions and everything. People yeah. are just like getting crazy with. You know, it's like I have I have one of my clients as a composer and he used to use a an orchestra in Moscow to do his demo work because it's so much cheaper. And nobody's nobody's using that orchestra anymore because it's in okay. Moscow, you know, okay. it's they feel bad for the musicians. But no, we're not giving money to Russia. OK. Uh, he's isolated is what I kept on feeling about Putin being isolated. OK. Um, and also probably afraid who's who's going to turn on him next. Well, I actually, I actually feel like I said I feel there's a group of the oligarchs that are still alive, that uh, that they're they're going to go after him because they've lost money, they've lost their livelihoods, they've lost everything, and you know they'll put him on his train and go somewhere, and he'll never sh never show back. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, but I also feel that there's with the allies and ukraine there's stuff we don't know about there's plans within plans to let it happen to right make it happen. that and also to end the war but also for <laughs> ukraine to go into nato and you were picking up something by july 27th july, okay <laughs> three months ago i said june 17th around that period would be an indictment around Trump and it was on the 13th I keep on getting I keep on getting July 27th as another indictment for Trump but I don't think it's going to be on that day but it's all Georgia it's it's Fannie Willis okay so I feel the indictments or anything may come down like a week later <clears throat> but if we backtrack everything started on the 27th that's when the decision okay because the other one I'm feeling strongly is Jack Jack has his his jury, his grand jury. Oh yeah, oh that's and that's the, he he's doing this. It's like, come on, you guys, let's get this going. Yeah, let's wrap this up. Hurry up, hurry up. So but he's got a great group. I mean, he has a great team of people. <laughs> right. Yeah, and like the joke was, Trump was playing checkers. Everybody else is playing chess. Mm -hmm. You know, but he thinks he can get away with it. But he's, as we discussed, I, people hate when I say this, I don't feel him going down and getting in jail, wearing stripes or orange. Yeah. Um, but what I get him is the same thing with happened with Spiro Agnew. When they had all those indictments against him, they didn't want him to be next president when Nixon was falling down. So they gave him an offer of. He couldn't refuse. Go with your tax evasion and disappear and don't run ever again but right. I think Trump something about they take away social media from him and that's his death that's his debt yeah that's his hell um Eileen Cannon moved T Doc's case from it doesn't matter where she's at to the Republican district will this impact on the jury pool and verdict and that's I think they've got such a clean slate is so beyond a reasonable doubt they, because the grand jury in Georgia, a lot of them were Trumpsters and they said they couldn't believe what they saw. They so, couldn't believe what they saw. Yeah. And there's stuff that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to come out. And when they see, I feel that some of those documents are really nuclear secrets. And to have them like using as a, you know, using, you know, to hold your coffee mug. Yeah. It's just, disgraceful so no um, pat lee wants to know what's happening with kimberly guilfoyle it ain't plastic surgery um i sorry i don't think she's with don jr anymore well there is that oh god what was her name that said she had an affair with don jr in a gay club yeah. but no i i don't think it's about that something else might have been about money because I, I saw that money is I saw it. Donald Trump Sr. telling Don Jr. Um uh, telling him, yeah, listen, don't look to me for any money because I'm broke. 
And then remember, he had to cancel an Australian thing he was doing, and he said it was because of the visa. Then the prime minister of Australia said, no, we sent him a visa weeks ago. It's because nobody booked with him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure really too much about her. I, that's somebody I just don't Very really sad. follow. And and also, he's hanging out now with Lowen Bulberg. Okay. Great. This is crazy, does. Okay. Will sh Trump show up for the debates? I, I have mixed feelings about that. And what I kept on getting was, if he does, I mean, this would be pure Trump, is he doesn't show up in person, but he's on a big jumbotron. I just feel like he feels he doesn't need to show up. Yeah, but I'm saying if he does show up, he's going to be on a big screen looking down at everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And how about Liz Cheney? What do you see for her future? Anything political? I want to say yes, but not right now. It's like she, I feel she's going to wait for the tide to change. Right, and, right. And then, you know, return. Sunflower asked the same question about Eileen Cannon moving everything to a very red MAGA place. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's too much information. There's too There's much. Too much there. I feel it's a slam dunk, and you know, even Helen Keller would see it. So. Yeah, yeah. So you said you thought Ukraine could join NATO. Yeah. Uh, within eight, two years or eighteen months. I got first. I got eighteen months, and like, let's not let's just say two years. And I see them really hustling to build everything back up, but I see a little anger with Ukraine. There's resentment. Yeah, almost like they're very happy to get what they got from us, but they had to beg so hard. And I almost feel they might have a little bit of grudge. Maybe Zelensky won't be there, but I feel a little bit of a grudge. I feel some anger. But it gets dissipated. It, I, it might even be towards Russia. Okay? It, there's, there were so many people that died. On both sides. And there's, and the Russians were just like young kids. And they were thrown into it. Jesus. But that whole story of the, the Ukrainian grandmothers handing all the soldiers sunflower seeds. Yeah. So but when you, you do see Tuberville being, being dropped. I, I, well, I, I don't see him running again in 2027. Well, the other thing is now next year, 24, mm -hmm. if we get even more people in the Senate, he's basically a nothing burger. He just takes up a chair. Right. Did you pick anything up on Dianne Feinstein? Yes and no. Her ego is keeping her going, unfortunately. That's good. Because if she stepped down now, the Republicans would not let us they put would, anybody else in. Right, they wouldn't. They wouldn't let anyone go in. But yeah. I feel she's angry too. Well, it was because like, she stepped down. She said, "I'll step down," and they said, "No, we're not going to give you guys anybody else." Right. They couldn't put in a substitute, and she's on a judicial committee, so it's like you know, and so there were a lot of judges that were being held up confirmations because of that, and she had shingles, and. And other, when you get her age, and you know what? Shingles doesn't care. Oh, I know. I've had it. It's like I had it on the side. It was like nice stigmata. <laughs> my mom had it twice. Oh, God. I never got it. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Well, I was. It's terrible, I heard. Yeah. But that was years ago. So it's have like, you yeah. had any hits? Or are you or are you just kind of going through it? Have you? Do you know what? we're going to be okay? As a well, nation, as a nation, we're going to be fine. It's like, you know, sometimes, and I use this as an example on Mel's show, and I end up cursing, so we can call me the potty mouth monster psychic. But it was like all when you have a, a lake and you dredge it, you want to purify it and clean it, all that crap has to come up to the surface. Yeah. And then you move it forward. It's almost like in. Uh, in Buddhism, when they pray Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, it's to bring all that crap up to the surface and then move it out. Yeah. Kind of like when we're 29 and we have our Saturn return. Right. You know, we get the 
if we're not doing what oh, we're supposed God, to do, it's terrible. Rug pulled out from under. Yeah. And you know, um, Andre mm -hmm. was one of the ones that said this chart that we have now in the U.S. is almost exactly the same as when we had the Civil War. Yeah. But we're going through this all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Except with Twitter. And yeah. So and you have meditations too, right? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. That's that's how I started with YouTube is uh, Mel had suggested I start a YouTube page and I said I wasn't ready. So he said, well, you do guided meditations with some of your clients and stuff because I studied hypnosis, hypnosis. And so he said, do those. And so that's what I started doing is the guided meditations. In fact, I was in recording in studio last night, did one called Loving Kindness. Awesome. So, yeah. I so talked to Mel today, by the way, and he was happy mm -hmm. that you're going to be on the show. He's hurting now. You know, he's not on the steroids. Yeah. And the pain, he didn't get much sleep last night, but it's part of for the course. It's part. I love that video healing. from the hospital. I mean, thank God he's, he's not sounding like Brenda Beccaro. Yeah. <laughs> Is she still alive? Yeah. Okay. So I think that's, I pretty much had all the questions here. Can you, wait, will anything happen to these repubes that run as Democratic candidate? That's a good question. And then turn into Republican. I think they're going to have something that the, you can't do that when you get elected. Or if you feel that strongly about it, you pay us all the money we gave you. Yeah. There's going to be some stopgate to that. I don't know what you want to call it, but yeah, it, 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 it was like cinema becoming independent, but still voting with Democrats. I could be totally wrong, but you guys, I see a totally happy 2024 with the voting and people saying enough, especially about women's rights. The other hit I keep on getting is within four or five years, 13 Supreme Court justices. Okay. Because originally we have the nine, because when they voted for it, we had nine appellate courts. There are now 13 appellate courts. Yes. And tell them, tell them everybody what you told me about Thomas. Did you ever see a picture of the Hindenburg? Oh, <laughs> humanity. <laughs> that um, and it's going to be, a lot of it's going to be tied to, to his wife. I know. She's in trouble. Jack Smith is on it as we it's speak. Like, Follow the money. And then he's going to say he's leaving because he's not feeling well. He's but. not feeling well. So I, I originally thought that was going to come down in October this year, but it might be February, October of next year. Okay. I don't think, you know, he's not going to last. He's Well, I think he's looking. I saw him looking at a calendar. So he's hoping Trump wins. Then he can comfortably leave and Trump could put a real good I idiot like him. Are you going to well, have? Yeah. <laughs> wishful thinking so real quick before we end yeah do you get any hits on ufo type energy i do i mean i had an encounter with a ufo in uh in, in mount shasta years ago oh awesome did you actually talk to them or you just saw no, them? it was we had we right. had interaction what happened oh. was there were like five of us in this little town called McLeod, which is outside of Mount Shasta. And we're walking. And all of a sudden, we like look over and does everybody see what we're seeing? And there's, there's something hovering. It looked like a, a tr you know, a Dorito in the sky. And it had different colors. And so then we're it just stopped. And so it was like, we moved to the right. It moved to the right. Oh, my we, God. Like, you know, remember when Lucio Ball and, and Harpo Marx... <laughs> in the mirror it was that kind of thing like we'd make one move it would make a move we make another it would make a move so it was like and then it lasted for about 15 minutes it was interesting then we decided okay it's time time to go but did and you mentally talk to it we tried i didn't i didn't feel anything. didn't feel anything all i felt was i wasn't afraid that's good i wasn't afraid 
But Shasta, I mean, that has so much activity up there. It's, it's yeah, nice. I was up there. I was up there with a girlfriend. She took me up there, and it, it was a beautiful spot. When I first went there, I was with this group of Sikhs. I was doing a retreat with them. And I was up there in the mountain meditating by myself. And so then when I came down the mountain, my friend said, look in the mirror. Go look in the mirror. And I did, and my eyes were like glowing blue whoa all that energy and i tried to take a picture but it didn't come out you know it's like oh my god i've got paul newman eyes <laughs> you know, it, but they were glowing i mean it was really freaky and the second and the second and third time i'd been up there the same thing happened but it only lasts for like maybe 20 minutes okay so that energy because the vortex you know yeah. you, just, you just feel that it's it's amazing so you're medium too right i'm medium rare I mean, I've had clients ask to speak to Uncle Archie and Aunt Gladys comes through. So I'm sorry. It's just, I, if they come in, they come in. I don't, right. I used to tell people I'd rather talk to the living and give the dead a rest. Yeah. But did, did you ever have dead that came to you and you didn't really oh, yeah. want them there? <laughs> um, no. Well, yeah. I just tell them to go away. Yeah. In the light of Jesus, please leave. <laughs> right. Right. Well, my friend, it was delightful to bring you on the show. We'll be doing this again, especially oh. as things get sizzling. Like the nun with the holy water. Um, it was it was wonderful, Linda. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. And I can't thank you enough. And also, look, if people will go to my YouTube, I was telling a friend, as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna give away two, three half hour readings. Awesome. So get on it. Now, when did you send me your links? Yesterday. Uh, how did you send it? Email? Yeah. I'll find it, I'm sure. And I also sent you some other information stuff. Okay. E book recommendations and stuff like that. Okay. I'll resend it. I'll resend it right now when we're done. Can you resend it? Because I'm not finding it. Okay. Yeah, I got check Ivana's coffin. Oh, it was the one. <laughs> it was the one and grabbing by the P. Uh, it was the one before that. Here's the links. I see him. Okay. Do you want your phone number in there? Sure. Okay. It's a. Uh, it, it it. I mean, I do answer that phone, but I mean, if I if I don't answer it, it goes to service. Okay. So you guys, he's in, um, if you look for uh, Ease Your Mind, author, Ease Your Mind. Arthur, Ease Your Mind. And you will see, um, and then the meditation links are on there too. On YouTube. Okay. Go to my YouTube, which is YouTube, Arthur, Ease Your Mind. And I've got about 14 up there, different ones. And what I recommended for Nicole was Deep Healing and Happy Healthy You. I sent that to her, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, you guys. Cheers. Thank you. Till we meet again.